Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. It's Sean's World, and look, we're going to be looking at the iOS 18 beta. Now, I've been pushing this back a lot, mainly because I didn't want to miss anything or, like, do anything wrong or say anything wrong about about the beta because I actually haven't used it for a while when I first initially made a video. I actually have two videos in the chamber. They were just both terrible, or I just didn't get to edit them, or I just didn't look at them correctly. So, I'm just going to make a new one. Why as hell? Hell with it. Why not? So, why not just make a new one? Just get what I actually... I actually used iOS 18 for a very bit of time now. It's been out for a, about two weeks or so. So I actually have a lot more of an understanding of the actual software. And from everything I used and done and did everything, um, so far I actually like the beta. It's pretty decent. It's not the best, but it's actually pretty good because they incorporated all these new features and technologies and all this new like stuff to make it a more of a wanted iOS operating system, which I actually like and appreciate their time and effort on putting in. Let's talk about the customization. You can now move apps in any particular order that you would like, which kind of seems like illegal, The way, which kind of feels weird. It makes you feel dirty when you do it because iOS has never been able to do that since its initial release in 2007. So it's a little weird. It's a little, it's not my favorite. I don't, I technically don't do it. I, I'm not going to do it. It's kind of weird to me. I don't know, it just looks weird on the iPhone. It's a cool option to have. It's it's a way to make the customization and the screen and the phone more like yours. Because most likely, 9 out of 10, it's not going to look like anybody else's phone. So it makes it yours and it makes it more fun. Now the coloring thing, the way you can make it from uh, day to night or just go balls to the wall and just make it whatever color you want. Tiffany blue, Gucci yellow, crimson red, lavender purple, etc. Whatever you want to make it, you can. It's pretty much your ideal color of what you would want to make it. I'm technically not a fan of this. I hope they actually change a little bit about it in the next like beta or two or even for the final release. It's a cool little thing to add. I just don't like how it changes the entire color of the app i feel like something should be left in there maybe like a little bit of color like for the photos app for instance it has it has all the colors of the rainbow on the app i feel like something should sh keep similar there like some colors should they shouldn't all change the same color same with the health app i feel like only the outline should change not the heart the heart should just stay red because that's typically just what it is it's just a red heart same with the photos too like if you have like the photos widget on your phone it changes the color of the photos it's only on the but i don't know it just looks a little weird to have i don't know because i was able to do that on a I was able to do that on a Moto G phone I had and it wouldn't change every single aspect of that particular icon. So it was kind of cool to have, which I actually, like I said, I like the color instant. You can change it all, make it yours. I just wish that it wasn't so petite and particular on everything it changes. I wish it would just change certain little colors or something. Not And not the entire icon. Other than that, it's actually a pretty good thing. Customize your phone however you like. That's all. Another thing with the light and day, it changes every app except the, from what, I, what I've seen, only the app store changes, stays the same blue, which is like, why, when every other, uh, oh, and speaking of photos, that particular app, that particular update, I am not a 100% fan of. I have been using the photos app the past couple weeks since I was in Atlanta, and I just couldn't get the hang of it. It was just not for me. I wish they didn't change it. I appreciate the change, but it's not for me. It's just a weird app. It's just, I just feel everything is jumbled up and it's just like a whole scrambled mess. The calculator got an update. I don't know if anybody was asking for this, but it got an update. You can now change it to area, angle, currency, data, energy, and force. I don't know what I personally am gonna use this for. I'm not a scientist or I'm not consistently going out of the country, but it helps a little bit if you just want a quick understanding of something. So if you don't have a scientific calculator on hand, you have one on your phone now. If you don't know, how to do currencies you can now you got 20 bucks now you got 18 in, in ireland or whatever i don't know but it's a pretty cool feature to have it's kind of decent to actually have now it's just cool to have that option with the calculator now because now you don't have to do all this extra stuff and it's actually pretty accurate you can't go to date but it's pretty accurate safari got a pretty decent update because now but it's actually a little bit easier to switch through the three tabs now well it used to be two but now it's actually three it was actually it's actually a little bit easier because all you have to do is literally just swipe across and on the, you're there at the tabs in the other way and, which i actually like because i hate like doing that stat in the third because apple maps from my knowledge i was going to do a full video on this but there is no point because it is still just garbage the navigation is terrible the it's just a beta which i understand but it's basically just ios 17 plus 
because you're just adding a little bit to iOS 17 to make it that. It's still in a beta trial, so the software all around is not gonna like help out that one particular app. It's not focused on that one thing. It's trying to make everything run and operate the same way that it should, that it was designed to. Yeah. But it can't do but it can't do that because it has all these bugs, glitches, and lacks a lot of like controllability because it's still in. But all around, the maps is still not good. I'm just gonna go back to Apple Maps and just call it a day. And one thing that always weird me about Apple is like you'd be in Safari and you're looking up a map. It would I understand you're on Google. Safari is basically just Google, but it's an iPhone. It should go directly to just the Maps app. It shouldn't make you download Google Maps. I don't know how to set that up. I don't know if you can make it just automatically go to Safari or not, but it's kind of like annoying. Just fix fucking Apple Maps, dude. It's trash. Just fix it. Stop incorporating all these designs and fucking 3D stuff. Just fix it. Google has 3D. Who cares? Just fix Apple Maps. It's garbage. The customization on the lock screen is actually phenomenal. I actually thought it was kind of shitty when I first got it, but I actually like it a lot better because you can actually, um, I'm not saying you can do a, a shitload more, but it's actually a little bit more fun than, it just seemed, it's just like a little bit more fun. You can make it your own. Yeah, there's not a lot of new, there's no new fonts or anything or no new colors or stuff like that, but like, I don't know, it just seemed, it's just like a funner and like thing to do. Like, Um, but you can actually change the boldness of the font, which I actually like because it makes it a little bit like simpler to use and makes it, like I said, your own. I like the customization of this whole thing. I'm pretty sure that was on Apple's mind the entire time. Just make this a customization update because there's a lot of customization options from the lock screen, the home screen, widgets, apps, etc. It's just customization out the ass. And then the two things on the bottom, the camera and the flash, like the fact that you can change those now is a good feature. I'm never gonna change them because there's nothing other apps that I use, but it's a good feature to have, especially if you use fitness or calculator a lot, or even the notes app or all that stuff. So it's good to use for other people, just not for me. I'm gonna just keep it as plain and simple as it is. But I like it because it just gives more of an option and gives you more of a customization thing. I've always wanted that when they first brought this home screen. I think it was like 15 or 16, maybe a little bit earlier, I'm not sure. So I've always wanted that. Um, they just never incorporated it, but I'm glad they did because now that you actually can, it makes me not want to do it, but I don't care. I'm, I'm still glad that it's there. There's not nothing new with widgets, really. You can actually just like go from like the small little square and you can make it as big as you want now. But other than that, there's nothing really new. There might be a new widget in there, somewhere scrambled in there, but I didn't really like look because like I said, I don't use certain apps, so I'm not 100% sure. But if there are, let me know in the comments down below and I'll give it a job check some stuff out because like I said I like checking out new technology so hopefully there's something that you can teach me as well and hopefully I'm teaching you something as well too the phone app I like it um, it's just one particular thing that kind of irritates me on the iOS set on iOS 17 whenever you would click uh, a call it would just automatically call them but now it actually just goes to their contact and then you got to press call it's a little extra step it doesn't really inconvenience anything but I just liked how on iOS 17 you would just click it and it would automatically call people. So that's the only like really negative I have about the phone app. And now you can record calls. I don't know how that works. I, I haven't done it yet, so I don't know if that's legal or anything, but it's whatever. The texting app. I like that now you could send later. So if you're like busy and you know that you're gonna be busy at five o'clock and you wanna send a text at five o'clock, it'll automatically just send it. Um, so that's a pretty decent little feature to have. All you really have to do is just go into your text messages, press plus, go to more and click send later. And then it just, you put whatever time, date, etc. in there, whatever you want to do. Um, there's new, I want to say there's new emojis whenever you, um, press and hold, but they're just colorful now. I mean, there's a few different new ones and stuff like that, or just click plus and you can add whatever emojis you want, which is actually like pretty decent. Um. So like it's pretty good. You, if you want to send this and you want it to be funny like a tree, just send it like a tree. Why not? It's your life. <laughs> Who's gonna judge you, other than yourself? We got garbage bags. Don't worry. Uh, what else is new with the, with the apps? Um, I know that the the AI Apple intelligence, artificial intelligence, isn't coming till like late July, early August within the beta. But I'm actually really looking forward to that and seeing how that actually works and see how well that works. 
because I'm not saying it's a new technology, but I hope that it's a well-polished technology to where there's no real problems except a couple glitches and lags and etc which typically was a beta so i'm not worried about that but i hope it actually works how you want it to um, especially with the emoji thing i don't know how that's all particularly gonna work hopefully it does work well a rabbit in a camera just show me a camera body with a rabbit head something like that it better work well at least i hope it works perfect will I'm, I'm okay with a couple of glitches and lags technology shit happens that's all I want. I just want it to work how it's supposed to, supposed to. I just want it to work how it's supposed to work. That's basically all I'm coming at. But all around this beta is phenomenal. It has a couple little problems, has a couple has, a, has some things that I don't use or will never use, but all around it is a great thing, especially for the first beta. I've actually had no problems with this. I had a couple glitches and stuff, but like I said, it's it's a beta, so it's technically going to happen. It's technologically impossible to not have that happen in beta or in Goldmaster. No matter what, it's gonna have problems. Everything has problems. This camera has problems. Your phone has problems. The car you drive has problems. Everything has problems. It's gonna happen. But other than that, it is a very well polished like beta. I'm actually glad that it actually is this well polished because the last beta I had, it would make my phone overheat, it would lag, it would freeze, it would glitch. So I'm glad this one's really, really polished and like nice, and I can't wait till 18.1 uh, or 18.2, whatever they're gonna call it, comes out next, so I can give that a try, and hopefully that's a little bit smoother than this one. So other than that, all around, I like the beta. If there's anything you would like me to check out during this beta, leave it down in the comments below, and I will sure to get to it as close as, as quick as possible. If there's something in the beta that you'd think that I should actually check out and think would be cool, leave it down in the comments below, and I'll check it out whenever I can, and I'll check it out. Um. But what do you guys think about the iOS 18 beta? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you in the middle? You don't care? Whatever. But let me know now in the comments down below. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.